five. See what happens. <laughs> Talking about our bromance. <laughs> um, boy, I think we're live. I'm going to give us a little Staying refresh. Live? Awesome. Just let me refresh my screen. Wait, I'm we are live. We're here. Happy days. Why can't I get you up on here at the moment? Let's have a go. I want to make sure I can see everybody okay. Can hear everyone? Oh, I've got a cup of tea as well now. Thank you. <laughs> Love it when the oh, I'll get a cup of tea in here. There we go. <laughs> well, that, that looks like a nice present that somebody bought you, mate. It was, doesn't it? Nice little <laughs> present in there. <laughs> For anyone as well that's actually watching, that was Sarah in the background. That's my wife, who most people never really see, but she works. Behind the scenes, but really, she's the brains behind Peter the Ninja, enormously. I'm just the front man with Jed. <laughs> the the brains. She is the brains behind yeah. herself. She, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't believe some of the amazing things that Sarah's come up with that we've been like, oh. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we think of that? <laughs> Why don't, yeah, well, yeah, we're supposed to be the ninjas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> cool. Uh, if you can all see us okay, and here is okay. There's a few people watching now. Make sure you say hello. Um... Obviously, I want to know that you're here and actually listen to us and getting involved. I want to try and keep this as interactive as possible as well. We're going to go through quite a lot today. Um, and we're going to try and do it in around 45 to 50 minutes. And we'll also give you some time to do uh, a QA and a at the end for any questions and stuff you've got. Um, Jed does have another coaching call at two, which is not the reason why we're rushing, but the Q&A might just be with me. Um, it doesn't matter if that's the case. Um, Jack's here. Awesome. Hey, mate. How are you doing? Hey, Jack. Rose is watching. Tim Harris is watching. Sarah's Sarah here. Briley. <laughs> hey guys, did you sleep in? I always sleep in. <laughs> I always... And I never and I never sleep. I was up at 445 this morning. That's hard. You know, literally, I was finishing work around four. <laughs> that's how we, people don't know that's how we cover the, that's how we, we cover the um 24 hours help desk on PT distinction. <laughs> Ash stays up all night and I still <laughs> and I'm up at like Stupid o'clock in the morning. Yeah, that's literally. That's why the, the ninja help desk is always like always seems to be running all the time, but just because of oh, silly hours. There's some, <laughs> there's some there's some of our old faces coming in. Taryn's here as well. Oh, awesome! Hey, Taryn. Ada's here. Oh, Ada, I'd ring you back. You rang me earlier. I'm not being yesterday. You always ring me. Ada's one of my best friends. In case anyone's wondering why I'm ringing it. <laughs> Awesome, happy days. I think we'll kick, we'll go kind of walk straight into it. Um, so it looks like people can hear us okay, which is awesome. I just want to quickly go through what we're going to talk about today, uh, which is basically um, what goes into a great online coaching program. Um, we want to first just maybe quickly introduce who me and Jed are. We're going to go through a bit about who we are in relation to PT Distinction, uh, kind of what we do, and also uh, why you should be listening to us. <laughs> because at the end of the day, so it's a, you could just say it's our opinion, but we want to talk about where we've actually got this idea and this blueprint for what is a great online coaching program uh, and kind of hopefully get you guys to understand where we've come up with this from uh, and show you how you guys can implement it as well inside your business. So uh, let's go and take a look. Uh, I'm going to bring up my screen and hopefully um, people can, uh, can see my screen okay. Terrence, like, no pressure. There's definitely no pressure. <laughs> I don't like getting pressure. So hopefully, I'm just going to wait so I can see it pop up on the screen. There's a delay between um, the Zoom that we have on our side and what appears inside. It's good. Uh, we're, we're good to go, Ash. Awesome. Happy days. Glad you can see it. <laughs> cool. So first of all, um, like I mentioned, this is all about what goes into a great online coaching program. Uh, there's many people here as well who are actually already who were watching, who are one of the PT Ninjas, and they will recognize the blueprint. Um, this is something we tend to use with our, our clients, whether it's our gold clients or our PT Ninja 101 course clients. Um, we're going to talk a bit about why we actually use a particular blueprint um, and any gold clients that come to us who don't really know where they want to start, we tend to recommend this blueprint we're about to go through today. So first of all, will this approach help you? So what we're going to talk about today, will this actually approach you? Well, if any of these things on the screen now resonate with you, just literally type me inside the comments just so I can actually see how many people here uh, can resonate with some of these. So ask yourself, how often are you speaking with your clients? Are you messaging daily, 24 seven? Are you doing it weekly or are you doing it monthly? So if you find yourself literally feeling like you're stuck onto your phone, messaging people 24 seven and replying back to them every single day, then what we're talking about today will probably be very, very useful. Um, do you manually onboard clients? Are you finding that you have to actually take where the client signs up, you're going through that onboarding process manually and adding them into the systems? If you are, we can help you today. 
Um, do you find yourself doing the same actions every time for a new client? So if you find something repeatable stuff all the time, uh, then we're going to, again, show you how you can automate some of those things as well using P2D, because there's nothing wrong with automating repeatable actions that's the same for each client. Um, and do you find you're having to create new workouts or coaching every time for a client? Um, are you making lots of changes to workouts and coaching for clients? Are literally spending hours sometimes adapting stuff for clients? Uh, and do you find adherence in all or part of your online program and coaching learn? So do you find sometimes that when you're going through a program that the adherence level seems to drop at certain points um, and that you want to find ways to help encourage adherence inside these programs? So literally, if you could, if you resonate with any of these, just drop me and me inside the comments. And um, yeah, hopefully we're about to help you today. And don't worry, it's not just going to be me talking all day. Jed's actually going <laughs> to talk in a little bit. I'm just doing the intros. Um, so what I'm hoping to get from today, quickly cover this, what goes into effective online program, what to automate and what to not automate, because as much as people think uh, we're always about automation, automate, automation, we're not. We're about automation in the right places. Um, I don't believe the best online programs are fully automated. Um, and we'll talk a bit about that in a bit. And how to create your own online program, we'll go through that. And also how to leverage people Pick a distinction to free up your time to focus on what you do best. So that's what we're going to do today. Now, of course, there's many people inside this group who are not necessarily Peter Distinction members. That doesn't mean this isn't going to help you. The majority of what we talk about today will help you develop a program. Um, but we are going to show you towards the end how to leverage Peter Distinction um, with what we go through today to actually deliver these programs and literally adapt stuff in a few seconds to people. Uh, awesome. So uh, who are we? Um, there's myself, as most people know, Ash. Uh, you may have seen me around the group before. Uh, my wife, Sarah, who walked around the past a minute, and Jed, who is here. <laughs> on the screen. That's me. <laughs> That's Jed. Um, people probably see me around and posting. I love, um, I spend a lot of time with my family. I love spending time with my family, big family person. Um, and I love traveling and I love adventure. They're literally like my passions in life. Um, I'll always try and travel, even during the pandemic. I've managed to find ways to travel, <laughs> believe it or not. Um, it was tricky, but I managed to do it. Um, and I absolutely love like adventure sports, like rock climbing, kayaking, all that kind of stuff, mountaineering. Um, Jed has a <laughs> massive passion for uh, motorbikes and petrol in general. Yeah, <laughs> and anything that's anything that's got an engine, uh, I either A, like fix, fixing it, or B, like driving it around the track or riding it around the track <laughs> really fast. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so, I think I'm fast. Yeah, you think you're fast. <laughs> uh, you're a fast mate. Be fast. <laughs> you, you carry on chasing other people around on your bike wearing leather. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, so between us both, we actually have around, well, over 30 years of coaching experience between us and the different businesses we do. Uh, we've both owned multiple successful online businesses uh, and multiple studios and gyms between us. And we've also both owned and help develop a number of other businesses in other industries that literally vary from like gardening to financial institutions <laughs> in Jed's terms, from adventure-based businesses to engineering. Like we've been involved in business quite a long time between us doing different stuff and still involved with many other businesses. But this is kind of about one of our main focuses now, what we tend to work on. So we do have quite a lot of experiences, experience in the industry and in business in general. So PT Ninja, uh, what is it? So first of all, PT Ninja is an independent service that supports PT Distinction and personal trainers with their online business services. So a lot of people think that uh, myself and Jed actually work directly for PT Distinction. We don't. Jed doesn't actually work for PT Distinction. He works with me on PT Ninja. Um, I run PT Ninja, but I also do a support work for PT Distinction as well. So I look on, help out with some of the tech support, help inside the group, do all the lives, uh, look after the PT Distinction University and run the PT Distinction masterclasses for PT Distinction. Um, so we help, like I mentioned there, we help run the masterclasses, the university and stuff like that. We offer a done for you service. We have a PT Ninja 101 course and we have a cool blog that's full of like tips and tricks for online coaching and for PT Distinction in general. And basically what we do as a business is we create wholesale online personal training packages for people, uh, which basically means we help you as a trainer come up with the systems to suit your business um, and develop those for you, help build them out. Uh, and then you can basically go and sell them on to your, your clients. Um, okay, cool. Uh, who actually owns Peter? Oh, Jack's cool. Who actually owns Peter D? It's actually owned by Tim Say and his brother Adam Say. Um, so Adam is actually in this group. You don't really see him very often. Um, he's definitely the more techie guy. Um, he helps do all the tech stuff in the background. Um, and Tim, who you will know, Tim Say, is the brother. Uh, they're both brothers. And they're the guys that run, uh, run Peter Distinction 
uh, both awesome people as well, obviously awesome people. And but I will try and get Tim um, and maybe Adam one day onto a live so we can actually have a bit of an interview with them so you can meet them more properly. Um, but I'm the one that tends to come and chat on the group most of the time. But you would have heard Tim and seen Tim in some of the other videos and all the instructional videos as well uh, in the group. Um, just to make sure we're not full of it when we're talking about stuff here, you can see here there's some like uh, the testimonials and stuff in the comments and things we get about the stuff that we offer. The reason I want to show you this is I'm about to go through what we believe goes into an online program. I don't want you just to think that we don't really have any experience in this and we just come up with a system that we want to try and say this is what you should go and do. I just want to show you that you know we, we do have experience in this. Uh, we do have a lot of data, which we'll talk about in a minute, um, but we also have helped a lot of people um, who are using... Basically, everyone you see on here using very similar systems to what we're about to show you today. Um, so I just want to show that you know this stuff does, does actually work. So a word of warning before we start doing this. We're <laughs> going to go through exactly what we think goes into an online, a great online program. So that means we're going to ask you to do a certain, thing, a certain number of things in order to work out what that is. That doesn't mean you need to go and procrastinate and do all the stuff we're talking about first before you even think about launching a business or launching your online side of it. You just need to go and do it. Um, and literally just by doing it, it's actually really going to help you do everything and find out everything you need in order to do what we're going to do today. Um, I know Jed's a big believer in just actually doing stuff and getting on with it, just like I am as well. But um, Yeah, jump and grow your wings on the way down. And exactly. with, with this, this word of warning, and I've had this conversation with more than one person this week already, Remember what it is that you're doing, what you've got into this for. And you're here to coach people, to help people to whatever it is that you want your avatar to achieve. You know, if you're spending hours and hours on making sure the font's right in all your emails, are you then becoming a coach or are you becoming a copywriter? Because then things matter, but not as much as you think. No one's going to suddenly quit your program and ask for the money back just because two emails are in a different font. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> Definitely not. And like, uh, like Sarah, Sarah was just saying on there, like she did this for so long, like this procrastinating, like literally just go and do it. Don't worry about other stuff. That will come in time. Um, so what we're going to talk about main today is the, the super system or part of that super system. Um, the reason I want to share what the super system actually is is because Yes, we're going to focus around the flagship side of it, the main online coaching program. But based around that, there needs to be the right systems in place to make sure you're bringing leads. You can help carry on working with them long term and actually nurturing those clients to actually be in your program. So they're prepared to have that program delivered to them. And we're going to we use basically a system called the super system. You probably would have seen this if you've been to the Peter Stinson University where we talk about the, the basis of the super system. We do have a slightly different version of it inside PT Ninja, and that's mainly because we work with literally thousands of, of trainers. So we get to see data and that data allows us to make small adjustments and small tweaks to what we deliver based on changes in the industry to get the best possible results. Uh, so the super system is pretty much identical um, to what you probably would have seen before. We just have a slight, slight change inside it compared to what you may have seen in the university, but I'll tell you what that is now. That's only a relatively recent change as well. We'll be updating the university though at some point. <laughs> um, so this is basically what the super system is. It's uh, nice and simple. It's a lead magnet. So it's something to help with lead generation. Um, takes them into your main flagship offer, which is your main program to offer, which is generally a fixed term program. So like a 12 week or 16 week or eight week. Uh, we found that 12 week tends to be one of the better ones to go for. Um, and then it goes into a membership program, which is basically an ongoing program. So once your clients have finished your main flagship offer there's somewhere for them to go and continue working with you after that's the idea of it now there's two other parts of this the challenge and the upsells so down here you'll see we have a challenge that also comes from the lead magnet what we generally recommend and what we've seen work the best with this is when you bring people into your lead magnet um, let's say these numbers are completely made up by the way let's say 100 people go to your lead magnet 50 sign up to your um, online flagship offer 50 of them don't so what you would do every now and again is offer them a challenge to the 50 that haven't signed up. And then basically what you're doing is nurturing those leads a bit more to try and move them into your flagship program. We then also have these upsell tiers here where you could start off with what's like kind of semi-automated program. Again, we'll talk about this shortly. Um, and they could upsell them into more advanced stuff, such as having coaching calls if they need the extra help and support and that kind of thing. That's really useful if you have multiple tiers inside your program. 
Um, we will talk a little bit about tiers shortly because I know people have asked questions on tiers. I'm sure they will at the end anyway. Um, cool. So what we're going to focus on today is the main flagship program, so the main offer of this. The reason we're focused on this today is because this should be the first thing you end up building. Don't worry about your lead magnets. Don't worry about your challenges. Don't worry about your memberships. This is your core offer. And this will basically dictate on what goes into everything else around it. Because, for example, if your flagship program is about calorie counting um, and your lead magnet is about uh, drinking shakes, I have no idea what it could be, and they go from one to the other, it's not conducive. And you're more likely to get things like chargebacks and also have lots of questions coming in from your clients. It's probably not going to be the most conducive thing to do. So you want to make sure that your lead magnets, your challenges all lead nicely into your flagship program. Um, and then from your flagship program, leads nicely into your membership program. So it's all logical steps then to take. This one, I'm going to let it, I've got a couple of questions coming in. So I'm going to let Jed just quickly talk about this one, about why it's based on data. I'm just going to pull these questions up so I know what to I've, ask. I, I've, I've, been, um, I've been busy in there doing the, the knocking some um, replies oh, out to people as we've been going. Oh, so awesome. but based on data, um, Ash and I both have a little phrase, which is you can't argue with the data. It's not an opinion. It's actually just a fact. The numbers don't lie. Over um, the last five years, because I've, I've been working with Ash for maybe about 18 months now, there's been over a thousand trainers have gone through and we've helped within PTD Ninja. With that, there's been over 10,000 clients that we've helped, influenced with the programs and stuff that we've helped these coaches generate. So not only are we going off our own experiences from the things that we've done and found out to be successful in our online training businesses, we've also seen what a thousand other trainers have done with 10,000 other people. And what we've developed is a system that works with 99% of the people that we've seen. So when we come up with the super system or when Ash came up with the super system, it's I've got to give some credit for that too. <laughs> it, it, it's been, it is built on the data that we see. And that's why when we put this together, we, we kind of know that it's going to be 99% perfect for 99% of the people. So that's why we build the super system. And that's how it is built on all the data that we've acquired. Nice. Um, so what does that actually mean then? Well, when we talk about our kind of the super system, we talk about our flagship program and all that data, that data does influence the things that we do all the time. And it allows us to make changes and tweaks. And we're always changing and tweaking what we recommend to people. That doesn't mean when we set stuff up for people, we always do that. Um, sometimes we have to try and adapt that to the needs of the business and the clients stuff they're working with. So there's always exceptions to the rule, but they all follow the same fundamental principles um, when it comes to it. And that's what that data dictates is the fundamental principles of that program. Now, We've actually found as well that generally speaking, when it comes to different levels of coaching you can offer inside the program, we have kind of six different levels. I'm going to very quickly shoot through them now just to, to kind of go over what each one is. And I'm going to talk, talk about the ones we're going to focus on, the ones we've seen have the most success in terms of business growth, but also results for clients. So we have the first one, which is one which is fully automated. So this is 100% hands off. Um, you have no interaction with your client. A best description of this would be something like a PDF that they would download and you don't have any interaction with after, no support or anything like that. That's nest. That's probably the most automated you get. Sign up, PDF downloads, away you go. You could also do this through P2D as well and have stuff inside P2D and deliver it the same way, but you'd have no interaction with them. Like you wouldn't have a Facebook support group or anything like that. The next one, level two, is supported automation. So this is where the program delivery is automated so you'd have a pre-made program that's delivered to the client. Everything's completely automated, but you offer support. So that support will be generally in a group format. It might be something like a Facebook group, for example, or it could be a group chat inside the app, um, that kind of thing. Next one is what we call semi-automated or level three. Uh, this is program delivery that is automated and offered via in-app feedback. So your support comes through in-app feedback. So for example, um, very similar to level two, where you'd have a program that's completely automated, you don't change it, tweak it or adapt it, but the individual client, as opposed to in the group, the individual client can then give feedback um, to you inside the app or via some other means, and then you respond back to them, giving them some help and support. But you won't generally tweak stuff, you just offer them some of that help and support. 
That's quite a common one that people use, um, and it can be used uh, quite well with the system we're going to talk about today. The most successful one we see, though, is this one, which is custom automation. So this idea is that the program is delivered automatically, but is adapted to the client, and would generally have some support with it as well. So here, what this allows you to do is you have a basic structure of your program, and then based on client feedback, you'll go in there and tweak things for them, whether that's tweaking nutritional content or workout or exercise content, um, general coaching, that kind of thing. So that's probably the most common one we find uh, that we tend to set up. It's also the most common one that we tend to see the most success for, especially in the early days of a business. Things will change over time, like in any business, but this is probably the most successful way we see people starting out, especially online. Uh, level five is what's called semi-customized. So the onboarding is automated, but the program is created and made up of groups based on the needs and feedback of the client. So this means when the client signs up, they just get onboarded. They'll fill in some forms, questionnaires. And then once you've got the information back, you'll then go in their account and you'll then go into PT and basically tick a number of boxes. And that will allow you to add in some pre-made packages to that. So pre-made programs that you've got set up. This doesn't have to be done through PTD. This can be done a different way. Um, for example, you may have an onboarding process and you may have a PDF sequence for people who are plant-based or people that want to do um, weight loss as opposed to building some lean muscle, where you would send them something different depending on what they want to do. And the top one um, is the customized version, which is onboarding is automated and the program is built around the client literally from scratch. Uh, I think Jed had a good conversation with somebody the other day about this. I think well, one of your clients asked you about yes, what's in your so, high ticket so I program. Was, I was talking to somebody about what was in my 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 high ticket program, and they were I think they were expecting me to tell them there was loads of great content. And really, for my high ticket program, I have an onboarding email. In the whole program, there is the onboarding, the results tracking, and their link to book a call. That is all that is in that framework for their 12-week program. The rest of it is built around the coaching call that's built every single week. We have a review. I put the text document back in of what our agreement was for that week. I might even make a custom form and get them to sign it so that they it's it, um, it cements in the agreement that we've got together. And then that's it. They may check in in the evening, depending, but mostly, mostly less is more in one of these more customized programs. And something else that's worth considering with this level one to six is there's kind of an inverse ladder. Mm -hmm. So on level one, you're going to be at a lower cost and be, be having a higher volume and a higher churn rate. If you, you may have heard that phrase before, churn rate is how many clients are gonna go through your system and not buy anything else. Whereas as you come up to the higher tiers, your Cost will be higher, your volume of clients running through it will be less and your churn rate will be lower because they'll have more of a buy-in because it's going to be more personal rather than you than trying to sell them a, a, an ongoing PDF. Definitely. Um, Paul's just asked a quick question there, um, just to give some clarity on who Paul is. Uh, Paul's actually on our PT Ninja course, our PT Ninja 101 course, and um, we actually pre-create a flagship program that everyone can tweak and adapt. It's just asked a question, say, is level four, which is the custom automation, what the flagship is built around? Uh, yes, it is. It's basically built around that. That said, that flagship program we give you would technically work, or the content we give you inside the course, once you get to the end, would work for all these different levels. Uh, but the actual main premise of that course, when we set it up as we go through it, is based on uh, the level four custom, autom custom automation, because that's literally the most successful version we've seen at all the different levels of delivering content to clients. Um, <clears throat> so Jack's probably going to love this one because I always call oh him God. Mr. Avatar. <laughs> oh God. Um, <laughs> well, I'll hopefully try and keep, keep it down to a few minutes so it's not too long. But you would have seen things like this before. Like I mean, I bet when, when we do talks on side here, especially when we're doing about sales and the sales of online coaching, we always talk about the avatar. In fact, every expert we've had on here at some point has mentioned the need to understand your avatar. That's obviously very important when it comes to sales and marketing, but it's also very important when it comes to the delivery of programs. Now, like I mentioned earlier, you don't have to know all this in order to go and launch. You can literally go and launch, get people in there, and then learn this information as you go. But the more you understand about who your ideal client is, 
the easier it is to work out exactly what to deliver inside your programs to them. So these are some avatar worksheets you would have seen, um, but we're going to try and simplify it, or Jed's going to really simplify it now for you on here. Um, and it's going to take out the four questions that we ask inside our PT Ninja 101 workbook and um, kind of break it down a little bit. And hopefully if you understand these, it'll be a lot easier to ask the questions we're about to ask you to ask about your client in order to build your program in the next few slides. I'll let Jed take over on this one. Okay, I'm going to try and be dead quick so I could be on this for... The, I could do the rest of the half an hour with this. Uh, I'm going to time you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Very quickly. If Ash and I both have a, um, a background in education as well. And the first thing that you start off with when you're going to build anything out is what do I want the end result to be? So when you're building your program out, it's important that you know what the goal is that your client wants to achieve. So that's why this is here. We need to know what it is the client wants to achieve by working on your product, on your program. Dead simple. You know, it might be four or five different things. There might be three, there might be two. Then, although this is in that order, we're going to go down. And it's this. the next question is, why can't... I know Ash has got this a different way around, but know, I'm, going to go do, I'm, I'm going to do it the way that I would ask the questions. I, I literally made these slides like <laughs> last night at two in the morning, so <laughs> whatever it was yesterday sometime. <laughs> and the question, the question is, why can't they do it themselves? Realistically, and it's it's never nice to hear this, but I'm going to put it out there for you. There's all the information that you're ever going to give anybody to help them. They already can find by typing it into Google but they, there's a reason why that's not working for them. Otherwise, they'd just be able to implement And that is, the, that is the reason why they can't do it themselves. And you need to offer that additional solution to them, whether that be accountability, support. It could be that they haven't got the time. It could be that they haven't got the... Um, they just don't want to learn it. They just want that information put into them on a plate. What else have they tried? That's also going to be important for them because you're going to want to know the things that they've worked on before, the things that they've tried and the things that have been unsuccessful for them. That's especially important in your marketing message because if you're looking for, if somebody has tried, um, I've got to kind of get my head around it, slimming clubs before. I didn't want to put any, brand, any <laughs> brands out there. If they've already been to a slimming club that was low cost, uh, of like three or four pounds a week or something, and that's not worked for them, there'll be, again, there'll be another reason why that. But So it's good to know why, what they've done so that you can start to build up a history of what they've done. And then the real pain, and this is the one that you're going to help people the best with because... This is the prop, the solution you're going to make is what they're going to buy. All the other things are superfluous to this problem that, that you're going to solve. And it could be, and I, I had one of my clients really, um, <laughs> Sorry, I've read Shane's, you've just, yeah. just read Shane's comments, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I'm just read <laughs> Thanks, thanks, Shane. Yeah, thanks for the input, Shane. <laughs> And the, re the real problem is the, is the reason why that they're going to work with you. They may say, you may have a client that says, I want to, you know, I want to drop a dress size. I want to lose a stone. I want to, but there's a real reason behind that. And I had a client exactly the same thing telling me one reason was I wanted, wanted to drop a dress size. But the real reason this lady came to work with me was because she had the holiday of a lifetime planned with her family and she'd had no photographs taken on holiday for the last five years. And she didn't want to not be on the photographs with the kids on this one-off holiday of a lifetime. So that was her real pain point was the prospect of going on holiday, not being on any of the photographs on this one-off trip of a lifetime to, I think it might be Sri Lanka or somewhere. It was somewhere really cool. Well, yeah, cool, not, it was hot, but cool. <laughs> Hot but cool. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, you get what I mean. Yeah, I so, what mean. all this is really important, and once you start to understand this, you'll start to build a, the best program that you can for your client. Mm. It will help you with your marketing. It will help you with your lead magnet. Mm. Every part of this is fundamental, and 
I've, I'm still going on. <laughs> You're five foundation. Down, foundation. <laughs> this this task here is the foundation for which your whole program and business will be built on. And if you if you do this well, the rest of it is dead easy. Mm. It just makes life so much easier. Mm-hmm. Ridiculously like, easier, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, Martin. Well done. I'm impressed. That's like literally five and a half minutes of talk on that. I'm well impressed. <laughs> What's really interesting, actually, I will quickly mention this before I go to the next bit, is a lot of people do ask about, like, do I do that about one client or do I that in general? If you're working with people and you've started working, which is why we say just go and do it, you can literally pick some clients to do this. You can pick a few different ones, ask these kind of questions. It's going to start giving you a good picture of who it is you work with. But also those different tiers we looked at, Tier four and kind of below, this will really help you give a good idea of what you should include in those automated parts of your programs. Tier five and six, you can literally do this for every client you work with. It won't take that long, but these four questions will tell you exactly what you need to put inside your program for clients if you're working with them on like a higher ticket program or very customized program. These four questions will literally tell you everything you need to do. Now, once you've actually gone for these four questions, you can then break it down a bit more in terms of the actual things you ask them to do. And again, this will work for the higher ticket stuff like levels five and six. It'll also work for four and below as well. So once you know who your client is, it's really important to remember that the blueprint itself that you're going to deliver to your clients is always the same. So people always talk about like PTs, um, you know, say about we, we're going to give this information, we shouldn't copy what we're doing and, and all that kind of thing. But All we do as PTs, basically, is we go and learn something. We learn and take information about the science behind what we do so we can deliver a result to a client safely. And basically, science is science. That's literally as simple as that, as as Shane would probably testify to. So science is science. The only difference between me as a coach and you as a coach is how I deliver it compared to how you deliver it. And that's why that avatar is so important because that's the only thing that distinguishes the difference between what I'm doing and what you're doing, the only thing. So once you actually understand who your client is, you can start researching things a bit more. Start looking about what do they actually need in order to get the result that they're looking for. And that's the real pain, the real problem. So it's really important. And by you, because one, I love it. (laughs) Um, So that's the real thing you want to look at. Once you've worked out who your client is, write down all the things they need in order to get the result that they're looking for. Once you've done that, ask yourself why they actually need it. If, they, if you can't think of a reason why they actually need that, then don't put it in for them. And why, as you probably know as coaches already, is probably one of those powerful words and questions you can ask anybody or ask yourself whenever you do something. Whatever you put into any program, any marketing, any anything you do with your business, ask why you are doing it. And that will really help you narrow down what you need to do, what's important and what's not. Once you've worked out why that's important, why that's actually going to help them get to where they want to be, Next thing, start asking yourself, what actually gets in their way? So what things are going to stop your ideal client avatar from getting the results that they want to get um, by giving them that thing to do? And once you've got that information together, you can then start looking at what things to include inside a program and what not to include inside the program and what things you can put in there to help make sure that those things that are going to get in their way aren't. So an example of that might be, um, actually, Shane, were you Shane's a good example. Actually, you mentioned there about meal plans. But a lot of people give meal plans to people. But we've generally found that meal plans as a whole for the majority of people, unless they're kind of athletes or top-end performers, don't really work that well long-term anyway and don't really hold a lot of value. And that's because they actually get in the way of the result. It's too much for them to do, taking too quickly. It's something they've never done before, follow a big plan like this. And also like what generally happens is they might stick to one plan and keep doing the same foods over and over and over again. They're not part of that decision-making process. The adherence drops down. So that might be, if you look on there thinking, what do they need? A meal plan, why do they need it? Because they need to eat this amount of calories. What gets in their way? Overwhelm gets in their way. Repeatability gets in their way. Life gets in the way because they haven't got time to prep and make all this kind of stuff. So then you can even ask yourself, do they need that? Or is there a better way to do it? Or if they do need it, what can I do to make that process easier for them if they do need it? So that's the kind of thing you want to be doing during this process. And just remember as well, um, what do you do in person? If you're working with people in person, you might give people certain stuff, but then you have conversations with them when you're training with them. You help them break it down. Whether you do this consciously or subconsciously, it doesn't really matter, but I promise you, you are doing this. They'll ask you questions and you will answer them doing it on the training floor. 
And all you're basically doing there is slowing down that delivery of information to them so they can digest it easier and then stick to it long term. And basically what you try to do here is not let your client drink from a fire hose. Imagine I get a fire hose, turn it on, blast all this water at you. How much water are you going to take in? Yeah, if I just drip it out nicely into a cup and give it to you, you're going to absorb all that water. Exactly the same thing we're trying to do here. I've got um, I've got a nice little one for this. Um, for our for our, I was talking about this. As coaches, if we think about the client as on a journey, they're on this journey to get to this destination, and along that journey are a series of traffic lights. And what our job is as a coach is to preempt them hitting one of these traffic lights and turn it to green just as they're approaching it. We're not just going to have everyone on green so that they can just race through this journey and not really appreciate it. We're going to get it so that there's parts where they're slowing down, they get some information and they can speed up. And we're just going to keep them flowing through the lights as they get to it, they start to see a barrier coming up. We give them the next bit of information and that takes them almost through to the next part of their journey. Like a good thing, isn't it? a GPS never tells you the entire journey in one go when you're driving. <laughs> <laughs> Just turn left. <laughs> Just turn right. <laughs> or one, or one, or one um, big thing. And, yeah, one, big and thing. I've just got another little thing on meal plans as well, yeah. which will give a great, which a lot of us will be able to, to um, understand about this. Have a look at how many, and it happens a lot with boxers, but boxers and professional athletes, once they come out of their career where they've been getting prescribed meal plans on a day-to-day -day basis, suddenly gain tons of weight when that information is taken away from them because all their career, they've never been educated. They've just been instructed of what to eat. They've just been told, this is what you must eat now. The nutritionist sorts it all out for them. And then when they're left to their own devices, they generally haven't got much of an idea of how to fuel themselves to keep where they are. So if you think about that, mm. education is key, you, isn't it? Whether the education is the most important part yeah. of it for your client. Yeah. If you can educate and help change people's habits, I suppose probably the moment you're trying to change the way they, how they do things, basically, you're trying to change 30, 40 years, maybe in some cases. And change the way they've done things all that over time meal plans just won't do that they just won't do that and that's not really what goes into a great online coaching program and i said what we're going to talk about now is, is, is kind of what goes into these programs step by step i'm actually going to show you one inside pgd as well and kind of how to use it in, in the next minute or two but it is really important to understand that the best online coaching programs we've seen are ones to actually coach the client to make change by far the ones that do it they're the ones and when I say best and then great online coaching program, I'm talking about ones that you can sell for a reasonable amount of money. We've literally seen these programs, what we're talking about now. That's the one I'm actually going to specifically sell, show you. I've seen it sold, you know, it's literally sort of 50, 60 pounds before, which I think is <laughs> a bit crazy. But also I've seen it sold for like two, three thousand, in fact, five thousand dollars before this exact same program. So I just want to kind of give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Great programs, talk about great programs that offer incredible results for clients that are long term and last, have long-term lasting results and can be sold for an extremely decent amount of money um, so you can really help and support that client. Um, so one thing I want to quickly do before we actually get into what goes inside the program is we have an approach inside um, the one-on-one -on -one course and also what we approach when, when a client sends us content through for our gold. So we don't always create content. We can do with our gold package. We can create anything for you if you want to. But we, use, we have a lot of white label content as well. We can tweak and adapt. But a lot of times our clients will send content through to us. And whenever they do that, we use this kind of assessment process against that content to decide whether it's actually needed or not. Because literally one of the worst things you can do is send all the content through and just send it all out to your clients. It doesn't work. I promise you now, if you think you're going to send out a 90 page PDF with all this information on, you're devaluing your program. They're not going to get the best results long term. They just won't. And they'll go and get another program somewhere after. It just, it's generally what happens most of the time. So there's, there's certain exceptions to the rule, very low-end price products that you can upsell from. But we're not going to talk about those today. I'm just talking about what the average that works best for most people. That's what we're going to focus on today. And so when something comes through, we follow something called the SMART method. And the idea here is we can assess each piece of content inside the program. In the one-on-one course, we actually give, um, we give you a book a workbook to work on that allows you to break this down day by day 
inside your program so you can write in what you're doing and apply this smart approach to it. So the first one, very quick, I'm going to shoot through these because I'm aware of the time. Um, it's got to be simple. It needs to be the minimum required while still achieving the maximum results. So minimum viable dose, as you've probably heard before. That's what you're aiming for. You don't want to give people too much. Ask yourself, is this the minimum that I can give my ideal client avatar in order to get the results that they need? Next one is methodical. Everything needs to have a purpose that serves your clients. The, the more lower price programs that we see, the ones that don't always get the best results, that have a higher churn rate of clients going through, are the ones that have kind of lots of resources thrown in, and then they go through and pick and choose what they want to do, what they want to read. Some resources are useful, like recipes, for example, they can go and search and find them. But take chucking all this information in and then trying to find it without no logical purpose or process for them to go through, then it, they just don't get the best results. So it's really important that whatever you put inside there is methodical and it builds on top of each other as it goes throughout the program. Next one is automated. This doesn't mean you have to automate it, but can it take advantage of any repeatable actions? For example, tracking results. Tracking results might be important for you to do. You don't need to set a reminder every time for a client. If you're using the likes of PT Distinction, you can preset that up so it's automated, send reminders, give them a place to do it. You don't have to worry about it. So if you can automate it, happy days. Some things obviously you can't automate. And if you feel you want to automate it, you need to go back to make sure they're going to get a result from it if you do automate it. Next one, R is resilient. Can it be quickly adapted to individual clients? If you put something in there, and again, we're talking about level four stuff here and above. If you want to adapt something for a client, you want to make sure it can be adapted quickly and easily. You don't want to have to think, I need to rewrite this entire program out for this particular client if you're going to adapt it. You need to have the systems in place in order to lie to do that really quickly. And then the last one is transparent. Everything needs to be crystal clear for your clients. But one of the most common questions we get inside, um, we get inside PTD anyway, and the PTD group is like, what about getting the client to do this? Can we have an app video? Or um, how does my client know they have to go and complete this? Well, the reason they know is because you've told them and you've made it clear that's what they have to do. Our job as coaches is to make it clear and simple for our clients to take certain actions. If it's complicated, they won't stick to it and do it. If it's too hard for them, they won't do it regularly enough to get a result. So it's got to be super clear and super simple for your clients when you're delivering it. So if that makes sense. Um, so that's our smart approach to different things. Uh, I think there's a question inside here. Massive thunderstorm coming over. <laughs> over there. So I think, yeah, this is going to be recorded, by the way. This is recorded in the group, so you can find it and, and access it if you want to at any point. And we'll put it on our blog as well if you want to have a look at it and watch it back on there. And I'll send it out in the email so people can have it. Um, so what's that actual online coaching program look like? Um, we'll take a look now at the Peter Ninja 12 week flagship program. Uh, this one basically is going to be based around uh, weight loss clients using calorie counting. It can be used with and without coaching calls and it can be fully automated or customized. Uh, and this blueprint can be adapted to different versions in literally a few seconds. So it could be habit-based one, it could be plant-based, intermittent fasting, whatever. You can adapt it in literally a few seconds for your clients. Before going into my PTD account, I'm just going to quickly break this down and just talk about why we do it in this particular way. So you can see here, we've split this into a 12 week program. So we have here one weeks one to six, weeks uh, seven to 12. And each thing here is split into kind of phases. The first phase you can see down here is like a getting to know the client and the client getting to know themselves a bit more. And all we do do is things slowly here. So we have an onboarding week where we ask them to download the app, put in their first starting stats, uh, do some goal setting, asking why they're doing it, working it out and digging deep with that. Basic food diary, um, we get them to get do just taking photos because it's super, super simple. And then we ask them to look back over their food diary, give them some little advice to work on, like a little document, to say what foods they could have inside then, how it should be portioned, and ask them to go make three changes that they think they can make inside it. That kind of approach there means that A, you can leave it automated, or B, if you want to, you can get in there and support them with messages by looking inside their accounts, by giving some feedback yourself. Week two, we focus on breakfast. We just use hand portions in this one. Again, I'll show you some of these in a second. And we get them to track it using photos. Uh, week three, we do the same with lunch. Week four, we do the same with their evening meal. Week five, we then start looking at tracking a bit more. So we get them to download my fitness pal on a separate day. Um, we get them, again, doing this process here, we're looking at activity levels and workouts as well. Um, week six, we're then going to track breakfast. We're not saying here's the amount of calories you need to go and eat. We're basically just saying go and track the meals you've just created. Uh, and then we get on to week seven, track lunch. Week eight, track dinner. And then after that, we're then getting to setting calorie targets for them during the last four weeks. 
And the automated programs, we generally give them the calorie calculator where they can go in there and update it every week. So it adapts based on their results. Um, but uh, from that point there, they can then start getting more faster results. And the idea here is they start slow and they finish fast. Before I quickly go and look inside the account, what a lot of people tend to do uh, is always ask when they see this, like, well, why are we using hand portions to start off? We need to get them into calories quickly. The problem with doing that sometimes and starting too quick is that it's just too much for them. If your client avatar has never really done this before, you ask them to basically overhaul their entire lives in order to have uh, to count calories. You're basically saying uh, they don't even know really what a calorie is yet. They don't really know what macronutrients are. They've probably never tracked a meal before. They've probably never used MyFitnessPal before. And you're saying on day one, download MyFitnessPal. Here's some calories I want you to aim to. I want you to make a meal out of this. I want you to do that for every single thing you eat for the next 12 weeks. Just too much, really too much for people. So we break it down slowly. So they use hand portions to start off with, very similar to the PN style approach that you may have seen before. Um, we use a similar thing to that and we show them how to adjust and adapt. And that's literally no different from doing calorie counting anyway. Calorie counting is based on using an average formula um, where you then get some calories to work on. You get them to do that for like a week or two. You track the results, you make adjustments based on the results. No different here. Average formula using hand portions, track their progress over time make adjustments based on results. There's literally no difference between the two. Um, so what I want to do now is just quickly go into our PTD account because we've only got, only got a couple of minutes. So I want to rush through this to try and show you how this can actually work inside here. And if Jen wants to jump in and say something or if he needs to go, it's fine. No, no, it's all, it's all right. I'm just, uh, I'm just answering the questions as we're going, Ash. All right, cool. No <laughs> worries. Um, so I'm inside my PTD account here. I want to show you what that process looks like inside PTD and how that works on that number four level. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna sign up a client. Like at the moment, I'm gonna use an example client. You can see with this example client inside PTD, that it currently has nothing inside there. It's completely empty. And one of the things we use on the course and what you can use inside PTD is these things called pre-made packages that you can embed onto your, um, onto your website, sales pages and things like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here and I'm actually just gonna add in uh, my example client to this pre-made package. Now, all I've done here is just put this onto a blank page um, so you can see what it looks like. But obviously, you can put your own branding around this, your colors around it, it can be on your website, that kind of thing. Lots of options there. I'm going to choose my time zone. I'm going to click create an account. I think I'll put the right password in there for that. There we go. So at that point, we can then go and log in, take some food to go and log in so they can access everything inside there. So if I go back into my account now and I go to my uh, clients inside here and I just type in my example client, you can see now things have changed with this example client. You can see that the offline date has now actually changed inside here because I've actually used a package to sign up. We can control how long they're having access for all automatically. And then if we go inside their account, we can actually see we've created lots of groups inside PT Distinction. Again, if you've not seen this kind of stuff before, we're not going to go into too much detail today. Uh, you can check out the masterclasses, of course. You can come join us on the one-on-one -on -one call so you can access to all this and all the content. But basically, all the groups have been added in for what we set up inside this package. If I go and look inside their account, you can see how this actually looks. So if we go inside here and we look at the schedule, you can see here we have the onboarding documents and videos, the tracking results inside there, the goals and ambitions, and everything starts to drip feed out to so managing expectations. We have coaching videos inside here as well that actually take them through exactly what they need to do. So when I talked about clarity, for example, doing little videos like this, showing them inside the app, showing them in the dashboard exactly what you want them to do step by step adds that extra clarity so there's less questions for you to be asked. We then use documents like this as well, like PDFs to help with them, um, that they can make it nice and simple. The more you can simplify stuff, the better. They don't need too much information when they're going through this process. So you can see the first week is about finding out about them. There's the three changes. Next week, we're focusing on breakfast. Even here, we give them the forms inside PTD so they can go in and actually write down three go-to breakfasts. We actually ask them to make some of their own meals inside here using this. This approach of getting them involved in the decision-making process allows you to take a good step back and you can basically observe the process as a coach and then if you need to give feedback on it and make changes and adapt to it. So this is why it works really well with this kind of level four approach. You can view this like this and it can be run technically fully automated. This entire program you can run and never touch it if you don't want to. And all you have to do is go inside here and just look at the results and stuff that they're adding in into their account. Now, there's lots of information here, but you don't have to worry about that because this is what you see as a coach when you log in. 
your clients have all that information drip fed to them like this over time. So all here is an alphabetical order for you to find, but your clients will only see things we put on this live and we on their schedule for them to go and have a look at. That's the same for the forms. It's the same for any tracking habits that we set up. Everything, again, completely automated. Now, at this point, when a client completes some stuff inside their account, all you need to do, basically, when you're inside here is tweak and adapt things. So say, for example, a client has set um, some breakfast ones, do they're taking photos of their breakfast. All you need to do is go inside here and in the tracking area, go and view their food diary. Now, as they complete things as well, they'll get added to the missed and activity area so you can find out easily what they're actually doing. Look at the food diary, for example, here, and you can think, actually, I want to give some advice on the meals that they're doing. You could then go and look at their forms, look at their go-to breakfast form, see what looks inside there, and just tweak and adapt things individually for a client. Now, that's all well and good, but let's say a client signs up to this, they're going through it, and they send you a message on like kind of day one, say, ah, I've just seen the food choices you've got inside here. Um, I need a plant, I'm, I'm a plant-based eater, I'm vegan. So like, ah, okay then. So would that mean you have to go inside here, edit and change all those individual PDFs and spend like, what, that'll be an hour or so doing it? Uh, well, no, if you have the right systems in place, um, like we do with, with Peter the Ninja when we're setting stuff up, you can change it in literally a few seconds. So for me to change this entire program from a standard diet to a plant-based one, I literally just go to the groups inside here. I go and find my coaching content group. I click remove, okay. And then literally all I do, hit my drop down menu, and I go and find the plant-based version of that flagship coaching content, add it in. I select the start date that they started, which is today for this example, click add and okay. And now that's literally changed it all. It's now gone from a standard diet to a plant-based diet for that particular client. Everything's all updated for them. And it's literally as simple as that to change stuff. Same for your workouts as well. For the workout programs inside here, you can go inside each ind individual one. You can edit the individual workouts, do swaps and things like that to adapt stuff really quickly based on feedback. Or let's say this particular client, you know, they're no longer working out in the gym. They want to do maybe a four day a week workout at home instead and they're a beginner. All I do again, go to my groups. I go and remove the workout group, which is here. And all I do is go and add in a different group as you can see, it's disappeared in the background. And let's say they're going to do a um, beginner four-day at home split. And I add that back in and click OK. And now I've got a beginner four-day at home split added to their program. And at that point, I can then go and tweak and adapt things. So, for example, if they have issues with squats, I can just swap out squats for a different exercise inside there. And that's how quick and easy it can be to adapt a program for a client. It keeps it simple because you're building up things slowly and then adding it on top of each other. You don't need things like FAQs and stuff like that for that program because basically all you're saying to them, and that's what that managing expectations document is, is basically just do what we're asking you to do. Don't do things until we ask you to do it. Everything just starts to build on top of each other until the end, they have a really good understanding about what they're eating, what they're doing, the exercise they're doing, the activity they're doing, and then they've literally start to learn something they can apply for the rest of their lives at the end of this program. You can then offer upsells and things like that to it as well. And it becomes like a really simple and easy way to deliver a coaching program and adapt it quickly for clients just by moving and swapping uh, groups around for people. Cool. I think that's it. I think I managed to get to the end of it in time before Jed has to run off in about 30 seconds. Um, <laughs> but if anyone does have any questions, um, literally, please do just, just let us know in the comments and I'll try and answer them. I know Jed's been going through a few of them already uh, inside here, so I'm going to have a look around... Um, Paul's just asked, in the, in the 101 course, those groups use the word four day, four times daily split. Yes. So it's four times, oh, did it? Well, it's four times a day split. Yeah. It doesn't matter to honestly what it actually says inside there. Like it might say daily split. I can always go and edit it and change it. Uh, but your clients don't see them. So your clients have no idea what groups they're part of. Not a clue. Um, so it shouldn't really matter too much. I don't know if I actually said it on there. I might have changed it already. There it says four times a day. Look inside there. It's automated workout beginner home four times a day split. And these are the ones actually from the one-on-one course. Um, so yeah, unless you, maybe Joe's possibly, I don't know. But yeah, they do say what uh, four times a day inside there with all the content and stuff added in uh, inside. Right, Ash, I'm going to have to Scooby. Cool, no worries, mate, no problem. I'll try and answer any questions and stuff on here. But uh, cheers, Jed, thank you very much. I'll, I'll, be back, I'll be back in half an hour. I'll drop you a message. Awesome, no worries. See you, right, later, see you everybody, thank you. Cheers, bye-bye. Awesome. So you've just got me now for the time being. 
Um, so if anyone's got any little questions, I'll hang around for the next five, 10 minutes if you need to, or as long as you need me to, to try and answer any questions and stuff on this. I know we've covered a lot inside here. Um, so yeah, if you do want anything, any help or support, just let me know now and I can show you whilst I'm on the screen. I think Jed's been through a lot of these different things inside. He can answer a lot of the questions already. So hopefully that's <laughs> answered some of the things inside there. Um, I think Michael's asking for a copy of the 12 week process. Um, yeah, it's content for the one-on-one -on -one course inside there. But like I say, you can see you can see that um, process inside there if you want to. Um, so yeah, the actual layout, if you, you like, that I put on the screen earlier. So I'll just bring it back up so you can have a look inside here. Like, feel free to, to do this and duplicate it. Um, this pretty much tells you what we would put in for the standard process. Um, but in terms of the content itself, like if you actually wanted this already pre-made and all the other versions of it made, like we have keto versions, plant-based versions, uh, intermittent fasting versions of this program, um, as well as lots of other stuff inside there, like creating lead magnets, challenges of different versions, membership programs, we have 12 months habit coaching programs, all that kind of stuff in there. And we show you how to set it up effectively, how to deliver it, how to bring clients into it, how to run beta programs, um, all that kind of stuff is inside the course if you want it. But you can literally just use this here if you want to. I'll just leave it on the screen a minute so you can have a look um, where you can actually just follow that through and create a similar sort of program. Um, like that if you wanted to. Uh, Kim, I really need help generating leads. Any videos uh, you've made that I can watch uh, greatly help some. Um, when it comes to leads, um, Kim, it is literally down to your, your avatar to start off with. So there's a number of different ways to make leads. Um, we've done a lot of trainings recently on, on lead generation. Uh, there's generally two ways you can go. One's organic uh, and one's paid. Um, there's a lot of mixed reviews on who likes certain things, who likes to do one or the other. I generally like a mix of both. Most of mine has generally been organic in all honesty, but that's because of the, the approach that we take. Um, but if I was doing fitness stuff these days, I would do ads and we do do run ads as well, for, especially for our PT and Ninja stuff. And obviously PT, they do as well. They run ads. Um, whether it's right for you or not, all comes down to your avatar and who they hang out. So the best way to make leads really is to go back and have a think about who you're targeting first. Find out as much about them as you can. And then if you're going to write ads or if you're going to do organic marketing, then make sure it talks in the same way and the same language as your ideal client avatar. Um, because that's what you're basically trying to do. You're trying to attract people into your business who are um, who you can help. So the more you understand about your client avatar, the better. And then just be consistent. Either be consistent in the ads you're putting out and the systems you use for that, or be consistent in the organic marketing and stuff that you put out. Both of those, though, um, there's some videos and stuff inside the one-on-one course. There's some videos inside the university as well that talk about both of those uh, that might be able to help. Uh, with advertising, though, like me personally, I don't like doing it myself, um, so I employ people to do it. I'm not very good at paid advertising um, personally, so I literally employ other people to, to do those things for me. Uh, but I'm better at organic marketing, so I do that myself. I also enjoy doing that and engaging with people like, like we're doing here. Um, so I guess a lot of it's going to depend on who your avatar is and the best way to go and do it. But generally speaking, know who it is you're serving, know the problem you're going to get, what you're trying to solve for them, know how you're going to solve that problem for them, and then write content based around that and put that content out there where your clients hang out. So if your clients aren't on Facebook, don't bother posting it on Facebook. If they're on LinkedIn, that's where you do it and learn how to best use those platforms in order to do it from an organic point of view. Same thing for your advertising. If you haven't got clients on Facebook, then don't put money into Facebook ads, put it into something else. It's all going to come down to who your clients are and who you want to serve and the problem you're going to serve them. And then whatever you do, just be consistent in there. And whenever you are posting stuff or doing ads and things like that, make sure you have some kind of call to action. A call to action doesn't have to be go and buy my program. A call to action could be something like uh, just comment something below or make sure you like my post or give us a share or go and do this or tell me about this or whatever you want to encourage engagement in whatever you do because most social media platforms um are based around engagement they're based about getting people's attention and keeping their attention as long as possible the more you can engage with people and um, the more reach you're going to generally get and also the more you engage with people the more people are going to stop building up that no like and trust factor and then they're more likely to purchase from you anyway so there's some things i would think about on that um also got inside it actually changed now buddy my mistake i made a note two days ago to mention this oh yeah we've been doing some updates in, in the course pause quite a few updates coming through um they may have got changed the other day possibly i did say to 
Sarah to go through everything and just make sure everything's correct and reorder stuff slightly to make it a bit easier to find things. Um, Sarah, which option is best? Breakfast test results using hand portions or macro split transitions for my fitness plan in week five? Generally speaking, the way I like to do it is breakfast test. I generally like to use hand portions. So if anyone doesn't know, uh, a breakfast test was something I used to use with my clients. I believe, I'm trying to think where I got it from. This was years and years ago. I believe I got it from Ben Coombe, I think, from BTN. I believe. I can't remember for sure. So I might have just credit him and it might not be from him, but I think it might have been a long, long time ago. So I used to do something um, called a breakfast test with my clients. And I'm sure it was, I'm sure it was Ben that might have talked about it. Yeah. Um, so the breakfast test is this idea that you can ask a client to have a particular breakfast on three different days of the week. One will be a balanced breakfast, one will be a higher carbs, lower fat, one will be a higher fat, lower carbs, um, but maintaining protein throughout. You just ask them to assess how they feel 20 minutes, one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours after they've eaten that breakfast and talk about things like satiety, um, like how uh, much energy they have to different tired, that, that kind of thing and get a review on it. What that actually does is one, it finds out for you which kind of macronutrients that helps them perform their best, but also for them as well. They start realizing the impact that food actually has on them as a per as how they feel for the day as a person. And they can start to then become more aware of the foods that they're eating. So the actual activity itself is more about awareness and the impact of the different macronutrients on their body. So when we then start introducing my fitness pal further down the line, and this is just for that 12-week flagship program that we use as our standard program inside the course. As they um, go further down the line that week later, when they download MyFitnessPal, they actually already have a good understanding of now what those different macronutrients are and how it's affecting them inside their diet. It also allows us to understand whether they truly understand the different macronutrients because before we get to that breakfast test, again, following that program, we get to practice on uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner using those hand portions. And we use color codes to help them work out what proteins are, carbohydrates are, fats and veggies. So by doing that breakfast test, it allows us to see very easily as a coach, actually, yes, they understand what these macronutrients are. So when we start introducing them into my fitness pal later, they're going to have an understanding of it. If they really can't build up those breakfasts based on that, then it's probably going to be a bit too early to add them into my fitness pal. And that's when you will then go make adaptions for them. So you might go in there, you might remove, say, for example, the, the main coaching flagship group, you might add in some basic habits for them. So we might add in like a protein habit for two weeks to practice eating protein, then practice eating carbohydrates, then practice eating fats. So we can change and adapt stuff using those different groups we've got set up. Uh, and Sarah, in your case as well, because you're in the course, all that stuff is pre-made up. So if you got to that point and you wanted to use it, you literally just need to copy in the, the protein version or the fat version. It's a two week long coaching program just on that with all the tracking and stuff set up. Uh, Paul, uh, this has helped me out loads as I was struggling to find how the flagship could fit my coaching style. The six levels have explained has made it a lot simple. Cool. I'm glad that's helped. Um, like we mentioned earlier, uh, a lot of what you do is based on feedback and data. A lot of what we do in the program is based on feedback and data. So everything we do with PT Ninja, we literally, even though we don't always get back to you all the time, we're always watching what you're posting, watching what you're asking, seeing what you're doing inside your programs for your clients, looking at data, not just on getting the best results for your clients, but also for you as well. So that training there with the six tiers, that's actually going to go into the one-on-one -on -one course. And we've actually got a lot of new stuff going into the one-on-one -on -one course um, over the coming months as well. Um, if you're already on the course, by the way, don't worry about getting on it um, and thinking, actually, I'm going to miss out on stuff. You won't miss out on anything. Like if you go into the course and you've just started it or you're thinking about signing up, just literally just go and do it. The stuff we're adding in is just in addition to um, to help you do all the things that have been asked for. Like we're talking a bit more about paid advertising inside there. We did a bit more on uh, lead generation inside there as well. Uh, and also doing a bit more on actually how to coach people online. The course originally was designed to help you set up and maximize PTD, but a lot of people have asked for things like that. So that actual thing you saw there, Paul, is part of that, that training where we actually talk about how to actually coach effectively online as well and how to adapt that for your clients. Awesome, I think that's most of the questions. Um, if anyone else has got any other questions, please let us know. So I'm going to quick flick through to have a look. I think we've got most of them. Uh, Mark was asking, what if they have counted calories before? Would you change it or keep it it's still out? If Mark, if I was doing that, I would um, do both. So I'm just going to pull it up, I'll pull up on my screen again, and I'll show you what I'd do, exactly what I'd do if they were already calorie counting. So inside here, it's plant-based at the moment, but they're following that same program. Now, one of the reasons, if I go back to um, today, one of the reasons this first week is an onboarding week is because it doesn't matter what they have done 
everyone will probably need to do this. Generally speaking, when you first onboard a client, you need to find that information about them. You need to learn more about their goals to help motivate them, like digging down with the whys. You need to basically assess whether they're at activity-wise. You need to assess whether they're at nutritional-wise as well. And that's all that first week does. So let's say a client signs up into this and we're getting to that first week and through the onboarding forms that we have, we find out they've already tracked calories before and they're just taking photos on this. They may see the MyFitness Plan integration and already do it and you can get an idea then of kind of what's going on. Uh, but let's say they're doing that. You think, actually, I want to do MyFitnessPal. All you will then do is go into their account. If they're comfortable with it, click on groups and you go remove that coaching content group here. And then all we would do from there is then go back in and we'd add in our uh, my fitness pal version of it or our calorie counting one so if i go down here we have let me find the right one there we go flagship calorie counting and we add that one in instead and now they're basically in a calorie counting one instead of in a um one that uses thingy so it gets them straight into tracking their macros and uh, do weekly views inside there um you can then go in there and set their macros for them at whatever targets you want to for that individual client uh, you can also use things like calorie calculators in there as well. Uh, we have like a pre-built one that you can put in. So if you wanted to even automate that side of it, so say if you go in there, set calorie targets for them, we can actually put in a calorie calculator into that bit as well, just to make it a little bit easier for them. Um, so we can do that as well if you wanted to. You can even do that individually from the uh, coaching area inside here, or you can also do it uh, by adding in groups as well if you wanted to inside their accounts. So there's lots of different options there. Uh, in terms of doing that, just to give it a minute, it looks like I've got lots of content inside here to pull up and show you. There we go. So if you wanted to, you could add in like a calorie calculator, um, something similar to this that can be built inside for, for the client as well. Um, so lots of different options there if you wanted to go down that route. Cool. All right, then. Uh, what other questions do we have inside here? Scrolling up and down. I think I've got most of them. Uh, how do we get a copy of the 12 week process? We answered that one. Uh, we just still change it. Uh, and yeah, Jeff kind of answered that question anyway to find out why they're doing it. Um, cool. I think that's all the questions that I've been asked for. Happy days. Um, in which case, I think that's it for me. Uh, thanks everyone for hanging around and watching. I hope this has been really useful. I hope this has been um, informative as well. Um, I know a couple of people were asking about like to find out more about PT Ninja. If you want to go and find out more about PT Ninja, then all you need to do is um, head over to ptninja.com. You can find out all about what we do there. If you're interested in the course, just go to ptninja.com forward slash ptninja101. And they can go and have a look at that inside there as well if you want to sign up to the course as well. Oh, oh some more questions coming in. You guys are keeping me busy. <laughs> uh, so one last question. I'm going through the one course again, just to refresh after some time away. How have I been notified about the new added content? Cool. So uh, if you're on the course already, sometimes when we have small changes and updates, we don't bother because it's normally in the white label library that's inside there. So it doesn't make a difference whether you use it or not. However, because we're actually adding new modules into this, what we're actually going to do is when it gets added in, we're going to send out uh, an email to everyone that's on the course to say, these are the new modules been added in. And if you want to go follow them, you can do. But like I said there, don't let it stop you from going through it again. It's not going to change the principle behind the course. It's just some extra things to come and help you inside there that you think has been useful. And obviously, as you know, you get lifetime access to this, lifetime updates anyway. There's going to be more updates coming to the course well in the future because there's some big updates coming to PT Distinction. So we need to update the course for that. That's kind of why we've held off for a while. Uh, but some of these things we can actually include now as well. So you'll get an email through. And also we'll post it inside our support group as well, Paul. So you can see exactly what it is. And I'll show you where the new things are. But don't let that stop you from going through it again. Um, definitely go through it. And again, if you've just started, make sure you still go through it. It will not change anything in terms of the results that you'll get from the course. Uh, it just means we'll add in some more stuff that you can then utilize in the future anyway. Um, Mark, if you add in change groups a few weeks in, would you uh, would that group then go past the 12 weeks? Um, if you just add it in for now, yes, it would. But you don't add it in for now. What you do, I'll go back to my screen again, uh, Mark, so you can see it. Uh, what you do basically is when you click to add a group, back into here, and you click to add a group, you have three different options inside here. As you can see, click add group, choose the group you want to add in, and then here you've got now, but you've also got on date, and you can backdate it. So let's say this client started last Monday instead, 
uh, we can script, add it in on that Monday and it backdates the start date. So they'll always finish on, on the right time. You can do the same with workouts as well, any group you want to add in. Uh, no worries, come on, I'm glad it was useful. I'm glad the lives are useful as well. I do, I do enjoy doing them. I find it easy to write messages sometimes. Uh, and no worries, Sarah, I'm glad it's been helpful. Cool. All right. I think that's all the questions and stuff in. Um, of course, if you're watching this on a replay, um, literally post in the comments and just say replay because I know you're in here. Uh, I'll keep an eye out for any questions you've got. Feel free to ask away the questions on the replay as well. Um, I'll try and come in. Uh, feel free to tag me in the questions as well if you like. And um, I'll try and answer them as best I can. If I need to do one of a live or do some sh shorter live videos to show you some things, again, I can do that. It's literally no problem at all. Um, but feel free to go and ask away. Like I said, if you want to find out more about exactly what we do, you can go over to a QBI message, that's right. Um, you can go over to Peter the Ninja if you want to, peterninja.com. Uh, check out our blogs. There's loads of cool tips and things to help you decide there on PTD. And also, you can find out about more what we do, access things like the university for free if you're a PTD member. Uh, you can access the PTD masterclasses as well on there and watch the replays, which cover a lot of the cool stuff we've done today. Uh, but also you've got the access to the one-on-one -on -one course um, and also access to our done for you service as well if you just want someone to work with you and help you set things up. Happy days. No worries, everybody. No problem, Paul. No worries, there you go. No problem, Mark. Thanks, Sarah. Well, oh, awesome. Those people think thank you. I love it. All right, everybody. Thank you very much and have an absolutely awesome weekend and I'll see you all soon. Cheers. Bye-bye.